Article 11 property tax exemptions. First, we have the transparency resolution, which sets forth the new designation and changes in the designation of certain organizations receiving local aging and youth discretionary funding and funding pursuant to certain initiatives in the budget. Organizations appearing in the resolution that have not yet completed the pre-qualification process conducted by the Mayor's Office of Contract Services, the Council, or another entity are identified in the attached charts with an asterisk. As with all transparency resolutions, Council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict exists with any of the groups on the attached list. If any, of, if any Council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations listed, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. As a reminder, please disclose any conflicts you may have with proposed subcontractors used by organizations sponsored by discretionary funding. These disclosures must be made before the subcontractor can be approved. Tamika Pate from the General Counsel's Office is here and can assist you with any questions or concerns regarding disclosures. Next, we have the pre-considered resolution sponsored by Speaker Johnson, which would ratify the Speaker's authorization to file a suit on behalf of the Council challenging the City Planning Commission's December 5, 2018 approvals of modifications to the special permits granted for the Two Bridges large-scale residential development. These modifications, which the CPC deemed minor, would allow the construction of three skyscrapers on a single block that would triple the number of residences in the Two Bridges area. Such modifications are not minor and instead should have been submitted as requests for new permits subject to the ULERP public review process. Last, we have the land use items. The first is Torrin House in Councilmember Rosenthal's district in Manhattan. This action would provide a partial 30-year Article 11 property tax exemption to support the preservation of 189 units of affordable co-op housing. The second is 388 Richmond Terrace in Councilmember Rose's district in Staten Island. This action would provide a partial 40-year Article 11 tax, uh, property tax exemption to support the preservation of 122 units of affordable housing. The third is West Farms in Speaker, excuse me, in Councilmember Salamanca's district in the Bronx. This action would provide a partial 40-year Article 11 property tax exemption to support the preservation of 343 units of affordable housing. The fourth is Langsam 15 in Councilmember Torres district in the Bronx. Uh, the action would provide a partial 30-year Article 11 property tax exemption to support the preservation of 60 units of affordable housing. The fifth and last of the land use items would provide property tax exemptions to the six properties in Manhattan that are being transferred pursuant to Round 10 third party transfer to the Round 10 third party transfer program. All of the council members in the relevant districts are supportive of these actions. Uh, before I ask Billy Martin, the committee clerk, to call the roll, I'd like to remind my finance colleagues that we will be holding a joint hearing next Tuesday, December 18th at 1 p.m. in Chambers with the Subcommittee on Capital Budget and the Committee on Education on the School Construction Authority's five-year capital plan. The SCA and the DOE have released the proposed five-year capital plan and will adopt the final plan in February. So this is an important opportunity for members to ask questions and make recommendations before the plan is finalized. Is finalized. And so with that, I'm going to ask Billy to call the roll. Lee Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on finance. All items are coupled. Chair Drum. I vote aye. Cohen. Aye. Carnegie. Uh, no on the TPT, yes on everything else. Van Bramer. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Adams. Aye. Moya. Aye. Powers. Aye. Matteo. By a vote of nine in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items are adopted by the committee with pre-considered land use item and reference to TPT is adopted by the committee. Eight in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions.
Madam Majority Leader, would you like to vote? Mm-hmm. Council Member Cumbo. I vote aye. Okay, and with that, I'm going to ask that we keep the vote open until 10.50. Okay, thank you.